Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I went from not filming anything to filming a couple videos in a row. Uh, my next installment of recent reads. I'm gonna go through these. The first two are actually rereads that I'm going to just speak about real quick. Of course, we've got Assassin's Quest. I've been talking about this series and this book over and over and over again. Uh, so I won't say too much else, but this is the third book in the Farseer trilogy. Uh, like I said, a reread. I just loved it. Absolutely loved it. You guys know that I love this series and it'll always be one of my favorites. And I'm looking forward to continuing on in the larger Realm of the Elderlings series. Um, I'll probably start that up in January, but I jumped between the audiobook and the physical book because the audiobook narrator for these is just so good, so great. So if you're into audiobooks, I highly recommend those because he does a fantastic job. The next reread was The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. This is the November pick for Horror in 24. I don't know when this video is going up, so we might have already had our live show. It's going to be on my channel. Um, but this is about a man in the early 1900s. Well, we meet him a little later on in life, um, but he is recounting an experience he had in the early 1900s when he was working at a law firm and he was sent to this woman's funeral and uh, then to her home to collect all of her paperwork and like, you know, do all that lawyer stuff that needs done when someone passes away. Um, but he is recounting his ghost story or his like ghost experience that he has from that time. It is about a vengeful ghost. It is about loss. It is very sad. It is a heartbreaking story. It was written in the 80s, but Susan Hill makes you feel like you're reading a classic ghost story. It is a gothic ghost story, but she really makes it feel like it was written when it's taking place. Um, I, I, I loved it. I originally read this like a few years ago or maybe more and I didn't like it as much, but this time around, it's like one of my favorite ghost stories. One of my favorite gothic stories is just so good. Another book that I read recently is The Orchard Keeper by Cormac McCarthy. Of course, it's dark and heartbreaking and depressing, um, but we're following a couple of characters. One of them is like a bootlegger. I think that's the word, yeah, a bootlegger um, and we're kind of following him as he's doing his outlaw things. Interrupted and then attempted nap time for a, like an hour. Actually, yeah, exact. I don't even have my watch on. <laughs> God. So anyways, I was talking about The Orchard Keeper by Cormac McCarthy and that it is dark and depressing and heartbreaking. And we're following a couple different characters. One of them is an older guy. Actually, they describe him as older, but I don't think he's, like, as old as, like, it, they make it out to be. Um, but he kind of, like, lives off the land, lives on the outskirts, is kind of like an outcast. Um, he's the orchard keeper. And then we have another man who is a, um, a bootlegger, like a lawless kind of guy. And then we have a young boy we're following. The young boy gets tied up wrapped up in this bootleggers shenanigans basically um but unbeknownst to this young boy that bootlegger has previously killed this boy's father so it's messy it's depressing uh i really enjoyed it even though it was like a hard sad read um but i think cormac mccarthy is could be a new favorite author i've read three of his books this year. Um, Child of God is still my favorite, but I am really enjoying his work and I hope to pick up more kind of soon. So um, yeah, I, re I really liked this one and shout out to my friend Marcy for sending it to me. The next book that I read or another book that I read is The Girl from the Other Side, volume 11. You guys, if you've seen my other videos throughout the year, you know like that I read this series and like got obsessed with it. I enjoyed the ending. It wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. It wasn't like, I don't know, I expected a lot more. I, I don't know, like I still enjoyed it. I'm still happy with it. It just wasn't like as amazing as the other volumes, but um, I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad to have read it. I like pre-ordered it so I could read it right away. 
and I still really love the series overall and I would probably revisit it. Um, I think I'd like to own it one day and I just, I love the artwork and it's about a young girl who at the beginning of the series is being raised by this like monster and we don't know why. So throughout the series, we learn about her, we learn about the monsters and this curse on the town and like the kingdom and stuff. So um, it, 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 everything's uncovered throughout the series, but it's just very cute, but also like heartbreaking. Another book that I read was The Family Plot by Megan Collins. I listened to this on audiobook. I don't remember any of the characters' names, um, but this is about a family who, the mother is like obsessed with true crime and so like they name their kids after serial killers or victims of serial killers and uh they spend like their whole lives growing up being homeschooled and taught about these crimes and eventually um like it turns into like they're a very strange family everyone knows they're a strange family and the kids one of them one of the brothers wants to leave um and when one day he like leaves a note and leaves and no one ever sees him again and his twin sister is like devastated by this but one day when her father passes away they go to bury him in the family plot and her brother's body is found there instead so basically we're trying to figure out who killed her brother and also at the same time there was like a serial killer killing girls on this like island that they live on and there's a lot going on but I do have to say it was really good and entertaining um I like the idea of you know like finding thinking your, the brother has like run away from the family for years and come to find out he's been dead all along in this family burial plot um there's some twists and turns and a lot of like connections to different people and uh, I, it reminded me of the whole um, who put Bella in the witch elm kind of story. You have this body uncovered after, you know, so many years and then this family's all connected and suspecting of each other and other people who are related to them or that they knew growing up or whatever. Um, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Not like a new favorite or anything, but I would recommend it. I also listened to The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. This comes out in March of next year, I believe. I got an advanced listening copy uh, from Libro FM. If you're interested in audiobooks, I have a link down below for them. It's the same cost as Audible, but uh, you support a small bookstore so you can like pick an indie bookstore to support in a portion of the book uh audiobook sales and like monthly subscriptions goes to that store so that's really cool but anyways um I like this one I think it's I dnf'd the wife between us I enjoyed an anonymous girl but I think I like this one more this one we have a couple different perspectives we're following Avery who is like a therapist She's lost her license though because of her questionable uh, practices, but she still is working in like a therapeutic sense. Like people still go to her to seek out um, couples counseling and things of that sort, even though she doesn't have a license. And then we're following Marissa, who is one of her clients, patients, and she brings her husband to Avery under a false pretense, but she brings him there to tell him that she's cheated on him and she wants to like stay with him, work on their marriage. And so Avery says like, we will have 10 sessions and I will fix everything like this. I know what to do, how to fix things. So Marissa and her husband decide they're going to continue to see Avery, do what she tells them to do and work on the relationship. Um, that's like the, the basic overarching story, but there's a lot going on in this book. We also have Avery's past and why she doesn't have a license anymore and um why she is in fear for her life and paranoid about these people hunting her down and spying on her it almost felt like Avery is one story and then Marissa and her husband are another and as you're reading the book you don't really know 
how they're going to connect and how they're going to bring it all together. But they did, and I thought that they did it really well. Um, so like it felt, I don't know, not, I don't want to say jumbled. It was making sense, but like you get pretty far into the book before things like the, these, all these stories start coming together. So I was a little concerned that maybe they wouldn't um, like wrap it up well, but I thought the audiobook was done well. I thought the story was good. I was, I thought it was a bit unpredictable and twisty and I I really liked it and I definitely would recommend it like if you're interesting interested in it if you've got like your eye on it I would pick it up. I also listened to Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine Valente I think. Um, this was a really short novella. I actually just went on like a three mile walk and listened to the entire thing and we're following a girl Sophie who is living in this gated like perfect community it feels like a stepford wives kind of thing and um so like everything's perfect but there's all these different rules for the community and what you can do in your yard what you can like do in your personal life so, like it even mentions like women not being allowed to drink so throughout the book you get uh inserts of these different rules and um one day Sophie is you know doing her like wifely duties or whatever and she finds some strange things in her house uh and so she starts to wonder what does her husband do when he leaves this community he goes and he leaves for work like what is he doing out there um it is very much a oh that might be a spoiler I can't say much else is very weird um but it's very symbolic of things and I don't want to say what those things are because it's kind of like the whole point of the novel novella it's very short um I enjoyed it I've seen like some bad critiques of this or like people not liking it I really enjoyed it it's good audiobook especially it's like two hours long but if you speed it up more than one time speed it's you know faster than that. I liked it. I would recommend it. The next two I don't remember if I've already talked about in other videos, um, but I'll talk about Feral Creatures by Kira Jane Buxton. This is the sequel to Hollow Kingdom, uh, which I read last year or the year before with, um, last year, with Stacks of Strange. And so since it's a sequel, I can't say much, but Hollow Kingdom is about um, basically a zombie apocalypse and we're getting the story narrated through a domesticated crow and it's hilarious. Uh, I listened to the audiobook for Hollow Kingdom and Feral Creatures and they're both done really well. The narrator's great. Um, but it's funny to have this bird um, narrating and commenting on humanity and what's going on with the like apocalypse and how he comes in contact with other animals and what they're doing now that these people are, you know, everyone's going through this apocalypse or whatever. And so the second one is just like a continuation of where we leave off of the first one, obviously. But I can't really say what is happening in the second one without ruining the first one. So I won't do that. But if you like books from animal perspectives, uh, sarcastic narrators and things of that sort I definitely would recommend this series I don't know if there's going to be any more I don't think so um but I really liked these I I love the main character ST and I like I just love animals so it's fun to read from an animal's perspective I've also read Fury of a Demon by Brian Nasland since I last filmed a recent reads maybe maybe I've already talked about this I'm not sure um, but, uh, this is a third book in the Dragons of Terra, um, series, trilogy. Like, it's the final book. Um, the first one, we are following a man who has Lord Burchard. Burchard. He used to be a lord, but he gets in trouble, he's exiled, and as an exile, he is tasked with hunting dragons and killing dragons. Um, but since it's a fantasy series... We, of course, have a lot of political things going on. We've got our typical, like, scientist, alchemist type person trying to uh, 
just control everything using like the queen and the king like you know just like that right hand man who doesn't have everyone's best interests in mind um we're dealing with like some scientific studies or like some experimentation on people and dragons but also I feel like it's a little more not flintlock what is that called when there's like I really can't think of the word, but like second era Mistborn, like so we've got some technology that's not like medieval type stuff, like that doesn't fit in with like dragons and things of that sort. Well, I can't believe I can't think of it. Anyways, there's just a lot of people with ulterior motives trying to control the masses. Um, I really liked this series. I think I liked the second book the best. It's got some strong female characters and um, it's got found family. Like you've got your group of like random people who come together and become friends and take on this task of like good versus evil. So I really enjoyed it. I think it's definitely underrated. Um, and like I said, it's a trilogy. So from what I understand, it's done. <laughs> um, and I definitely would read more from this author. And if you're looking for a good fantasy, I highly recommend this one. So that's it for my recent reads. I've had to change the camera angle multiple times. Sorry about that. Um, kind of chaotic, chaotic time of year, chaotic time in my parenting life, having a toddler who th thinks he's 16. Let me know what you've been reading lately and I'll see you in my next video.